Well, if you all are ready, um, we might start to go into more of the kind of political Q and A stuff. And uh, by you know, the way, super chats we will be taking those uh, a little bit later on too. Um, so uh, you can get those going. Just want to throw that out there. Yeah, no, we're like we're trying to go return to a little bit of that that think tank uh, structure. So one of the like number one questions that we got were book recommendations, mm. uh, which is something that you know. Uh, Michael will do really great live streams where he would sort of talk about a book that he's reading. Uh, you know, I would do some live streams on that too. And that's been a big part of, of the project. So um, I think we we all sort of have a couple of book suggestions. Um, and if one of y'all want to, to start and I can go after. Um, yeah, I want to, let me bring it up here, but I want to start with the first book. I was going through my text with Michael and just the images. And uh, the very first image he ever sent me was of this book that he was reading, uh, A Legacy of Liberation, Tabo Mbeki and the Future of the South African Dream by Mark Jeviser, a South African uh, journalist. And uh, let's see if I can pull up the page here. I'll, I'll, uh, um, okay, here's a Queens Library page, let's share this. Um, and uh, I, I read it last week. Um, <laughs> And I see why, because he's, the type of, um, and I think the ANC struggle in general, the type, they, like they saw all this stuff. Any sort of intra-party, intra-left splits that we might be experiencing now and like, you know, difficult, you know, which side of this issue do we come down on? Are we going to get sectarian about it? The ANC went through all that stuff. Um, identity politics and communists and like, like real versions, of the, the original versions of all of those words, right? Like, um, and let me just share the book. Uh, and so like, I, well, I was just, I was reading it. Um, and I knew exactly why Michael, and it was the first thing like back in 2016, he told me to, uh, to read it. And, uh, yeah, that would be the first one I would, I would recommend because, you know, it's, a, you, you talk a lot, of, a lot about these issues and it's, if, if all the case studies you have is, you know, what you've gone through on Twitter, I frankly don't, I'm not that curious about what you have to say, but if you can like, contextualize what you're saying with and show us that you've put the work in understanding historical struggles, mm -hmm. uh, then you become a lot more credible in my opinion. So that would be my first recommendation. Yeah. And they also had to deal with not only, you know, what you mentioned too, but also like being a kind of left project in a post Soviet uh, world too, which is something that when we rely on a lot of these older texts too, it's a completely different context that we're living through. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One well, completely underground too, I guess. Like you talk about, like maybe we should count our blessings that we're not being like arrested for decades. At this point. I think Michael right. paranoia about that. Though. Oh yes, trust me. I've shared that with Michael too. They, I mean, knock on wood. We don't know how long think, this is going to be allowed. Yeah, I know. I, I like that. Unfortunately, that was something that was a bit of anxiety, and that yeah. I also, you know, I don't. We have to go there, but. No. Mm -hmm. Just not yeah. wait. Wait till <laughs> wait till the McCarthy two hearings are come through that's, Hollywood again, and we get you in trouble. To, to cancel culture, I think for Michael, that was I think the anxiety was, you know, McCarthy. I mean, look, McCarthy the thing too. with Truanon, um, yeah. and like um, Brace Belden, and he because he went. Oh, you guys the, aren't you guys aren't into Kim? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, that's speaking of <laughs> that's speaking of podcast. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we have some editorial uh, changes to announce tonight, everybody. Uh, <laughs> we're going to do a Q segment. Um, you know, just start, we're just going to call it balls and strikes, though. You know, <laughs> that, try to wait. be objective about it. Um, sorry, I, I found out what Q was last week, so I, no, that's just, <laughs> I'm, I'm playing on this. I'm fascinated by that stuff personally. Yeah. It's well. Um, well, I guess I can jump through mine real quick. Um, I'm going to do a rapid fire, some quick ones, just because I think these are foundational. And if you'll spend any time with me, you know, I really do try to push people to return to the, the classics. Um, so, you know, the first one is obvious, you know, people should get the Marx Engels reader um, by Robert Tucker, indispensable, uh, really um, crucial collection of Marx's writings. Uh, that I think really need to be grounding us uh, today. And you know, a lot of people think they understand Marx because they can absorb people who, who are talking about Marx constantly, but it's really important to return to those source texts. I always suggest people spend a little bit of time and read the Communist Manifesto. It's literally 30 minutes. And you, I'm amazed sometimes at how 
um, and frequent that is is uh, under text by people. Critique of the Gotha program is another phenomenal one. Well, uh, Jordan Peterson taught us that all you really need to read is the Communist Manifesto, yeah. and you yes, yeah. 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 saw reading of the Communist. He's right. It's about identity <laughs> politics, apparently. Um, yeah. I highly suggest that, and then just rapid fire too. Um, you know, another great Robert Tucker uh, collection of, of essays is the Lenin Anthology. Uh, I highly suggest people uh, spend some time reading Lenin. Lenin, I think, is a very misunderstood thinker, um, especially since there are so many people who sort of drape themselves in a kind of, uh, you know, what, you know, the kind of like, you know, anime Leninist people that y'all see are very different from like the actual really existing and thinking Lenin, um, especially his earlier writings, like What is to be Done, I think are very um, important for a moment like today where the left feels really fragmented. And Another just like key uh, text too uh, is The Wretched of the Earth by Franz Fanon. Mm. Uh, I can't suggest this book enough. Um, it really changed my life and my politics immensely. Um, not only because he was really charting such a radical and important moment in history, which was all of these uh, post-colonial revolutions, but he was preparing for many of the pitfalls um, that came, uh, came about within those. He is one of the most amazing uh, people and an incredible writer um, and, you know, an actual revolutionary. Uh, so I can't suggest that enough. Um, and just, you know, really- David, in, yeah. that, um, in that lane, I also just uh, finished reading How Europe Underdeveloped Africa by Walter Rodney. He mentions yeah. Fanon quite a lot. Are you familiar with Walter Rodney? Yeah, Walter Rodney is, is really, absolutely a phenomenal thinker. Uh, something you should definitely have on your bookshelf. I have, um, you know, Michael and I were actually talking about Walter Rodney a lot recently, and we both uh, picked up this book, too. <laughs> um, the Russian Revolution, A View from the Third World, uh, ah, which is really that's interesting. That's so funny. I was just going to, Michael and I have recently been talking about the Re Russian Revolution. I was wondering if either of you had a recommendation on that, because that was such a pivotal slit of a... Yeah. yeah. Rodney died young though, right? How, how many books did he get out? You know, um, I actually don't know much about his like biography on that, on that level. I know more as a thinker. Interesting. Um, but yeah, but on the Michael kick, one thing that Michael and I both like to talk about and is a really important thinker for me, and we've always, and I, you know, it's one of those things, obviously there's so many unfinished works and conversations, but uh, you know, Machiavelli uh, too, the portable Machiavelli is a great, uh, uh, text that you can get a lot of um, his work, including the discourses, which are, you know, different um, from The Prince, which most people are familiar with. But Machiavelli is really radical. Um, and I would say he, what he did was he um, reinstated the people as a concept in political philosophy. And there's a reason that people consider him to be one of the most important of the quote unquote modern uh, political, political theorists. And I can't suggest enough, especially for people who have read Machiavelli before and might want to get back into it. Uh, this text um, by uh, Louis Althusser um, called Machiavelli and Us is a really phenomenal companion reader with it. It's a short text, but uh, it's very, you know, it's definitely something that you need to take your time reading. It's only 100 pages, but you have to take your time reading with it. With it. For people who aren't familiar, uh, Althusser is one of the great uh, Marxist uh, theorists, and specifically with a return to Marx, while a lot of people in the New Left are sort of moving away um, from Marx. Uh, Althusser was a really adamant uh, person about returning to a kind of Marxist interpretation of the world. Anyways, he does a really wonderful uh, job with this text, actually trying to like, you know, take an old text like, uh, you know, The Prince and really drag it, drag it into, into the present. So right. those, those are, well, I'm sorry, I have a bunch, but just one last one. Uh, yeah, good. This one is a, a really great one uh, to uh, Open Veins of Latin America uh, by Eduardo Galeno. Um, this takes basically the story of Latin America through the uh, European colonization and exploitation. And not only is it a really important text for American and, and European uh, leftists to read, it really puts those things in context in the actual global historical scale, right? Because like you can read texts from history and you say, oh man, this was so, so bad. And you should have that when you read this, uh, this text, because it's horrible what the span, you know, what all of these European powers did to that part of the world. 
But what's really amazing about it is he actually identifies how critical the exploitation of Latin America was to the success of European capitalism. You know, they turned Latin America into an open pit mine right. and the amount of wealth that they were able to, mineral wealth essentially, and human labor and all of these things that they were able to extract actually um, is equal to the capital investment um, in the United Kingdom uh, at the very beginning of their industrialization, right? So the point there is you thinking about history as Marxist, understanding that like these histories actually have like a very serious material basis and right. they explain a lot of the ways that the world uh, works today or looks today. I mean, it's very like kind of way too watered down, but I mean, it, quite simply, if you if you follow the money, there at some point there is a quite literal, you know, extraction of wealth and material that, that you know is at the base of, of most systems we see today. Um, I know recently it's become more known in in kind of broader culture because of videos online, like what happened with Haiti, for instance. Like you know, just the, the, like these systems. I mean, what bank that what, what was it? Um, like Chase or um, there was some bank that is still collecting, you know, up until the 1940s um, money from from Haiti. That's an American bank that's still open today. And, you know, it's it's connecting these dots is it's just so important because people, I think, just kind of feel like, oh, that's just the way things are. That's just kind of the way things have to operate. And as soon mm -hmm. as you start to peel back the curtain, it's, it gives you the ability to like really talk about it with people because otherwise it's just kind of these abstract words that you know people are able to kind of push you aside or it's like you don't understand how the real world works and it's like no this is actually what happened um, so like very simple to say like where did all this uh, luxury and wealth come from that made this <laughs> society so popular it's like what because of this we're so smart that we thought all of it or is it because of the giant shipping right, uh, right, of right. including human bodies that you're sure, taking part in sure. like maybe that has something to do. like I'm, i actually just finished up galliano too um in the past week because there's a few books that you need to read when you realize you're gonna have to cover part of michael's portfolio and that's one of them <laughs> um and uh you know it's a little bit uh, depressing to find out is galliano has said he can't read that book anymore but he won't say why it's like people are saying it's like some sort of conservative turn but he won't say specifically what it is huh. he just say like the prose was too like huh. you know vulgar marxist or whatever but ignore him okay. uh, and read his and book read it. because okay. it's a great book actually. oh I, I hate when people turn evil or weird um, i mean he was like an author right like i mean yeah. who knows you, uh, yeah. you know you can't trust you can't trust the intelligentsia <laughs> Speaking of the intelligence, no, I, I have to say the number one book Michael would recommend would be his own oh, book. Um, sold out a lot of places. Sold out. I mean, who who would have thought that this original uh, pressing or, or order would, would become such a rare edition? So actually, someone reached out to me on Instagram and they had ordered a bunch and they want to do a giveaway. So um, keep your eyes out for that. I think we're going to give away something like 30 copies of the book. But um my mom and I were texting about Michael Reed's and it's, uh, there's just, there's so many. And um, we kind of thought it'd be fun to share some things he liked when he was younger. Um, mm. at, at the memorial service, my mom mentioned this and I, I just keep thinking about this. As a child, Michael loved Robin Hood. Um, he, he really liked all the mythology of him stealing from the rich and giving to the poor. Um, he also loved as a little kid, the Red Wall books. He liked all the, um, you know, he liked all the, the mythology stuff. He liked Lord of the Rings and, you know, Star Wars. So that kind of makes me, um, I don't know, something something about the escapism of right now and kind of getting to get into some of that, um, you know, just really classic literature and heroes' journeys can, can be nice. Um, I mean, we're definitely going to have to just throw together like a, a pretty massive like reading library. You know, in high school, Ken Wilber was a big influence on him. Um, you know, a lot of the people that are on the show are, you know, some of his favorite authors, you know, Cornell West and um, Adolf Reed. It, of course, yeah. Um, the People's History of the United States, Howard Zinn, and, and again, that was obviously in high school. Um, and, you know, this is 100% me. There are huge gaps in my knowledge that I just, you know, leaned on Michael for. Um, I hope that a lot of people who are watching are probably <laughs> way more on it. But, um, he, he recommends uh, Neoliberalism by Harvey. Do one of you guys remember? Is it David Harvey? David yeah. Harvey. 
Um, I, I know that he feels like that's an important read to just kind of get a, a little bit more like nuanced about some of the language we throw around. You know, we say neoliberal, we say technocrat, and you know, we kind of have these this general understanding, but it can be helpful to kind of dig into what's what's under it and the history of, of how these these uh, terms are, are built. Yeah, I, 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 you know, I would just suggest to, to everybody, because one thing that's been really enriching in my life is like, not thinking that you that you've been exposed to everything, you know, like, yes, we, you know, if, if you spend enough time reading or dealing with history, like, yes, you might have a general idea of like, what the thinkers ideas were, what this history was. But I'm telling you, whenever you actually spend time and with source material and going deep into these things, it's highly rewarding. And there's really yeah. almost like even something like the American Revolution, for example, you know, studying that again is going to be very beneficial. Um, yeah. Another one I would just add, uh, CLR James's Black Jacobins just mm -hmm. came out on Audible. Um, I, and I'd read that before, but listening to it again today, just walking around Brooklyn, it's just all time amazing yeah. um, book. Um, so I re definitely recommend that. Uh, and also on Audible for people who get their stuff through Audible is uh, Eric, the Eric Hobsbawm, Age of uh, Quadrilogy. I always call it a trilogy because I'd only actually read the, um, the one on the long 19th century. Um, but all four, the age of revolutions, the age of capital, and the age of, I missed one, extremes, and there's another one in there. But those are amazing general purpose, uh, mainly European Eurocentric um, histories of like labor and class struggle. So mm -hmm. I, th those are, that's a great place to start for people. And one, 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 no. Um, and mm -hmm. also uh, Religions of the World by Houston Smith, I know is a book. I know some people have been asking about spirituality and, and religion um, in the questions. Speaking of Audible, does anyone know of an Audible al alternative? I love audiobooks and would love to not use Amazon. I use my local library, which everyone should check out. You could download apps that have audiobooks from your library. Um, you sometimes have to wait a while, but it's free. Um, but also if anyone knows of audible alternatives where you can get new books immediately i'm always looking for leads on that yeah i don't use any of the other ones really yeah. um, just try not to give bezos a kickback oh i've, oh, I've had gosh. audible since before it was bought by bezos I know, I, I it's really too. irritating I, I know it drives me nuts i it's like i pulled out big banks and now i can now i have to pull out audible mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I just make sure I spend all my credits on Marxists. There you go. <laughs> like there that, you Bezos. Go. There you go. <laughs> um, and you have unlimited returns, so you can kind of work the system. You can, yes. Take advantage of that, folks. <laughs>